I have a degree in mechanical engineering. That's what I was doing in university before I came here. And uh, but I always loved um, art, music, you know, recreational programming and stuff like that. So that, that it was kind of that package of things that I loved to do. And and uh, just as I was graduating, I found out through a local uh, TV show actually that BioWare was here in Edmonton. They were a video game company with a anticipated new game called uh, Baldur's Gate. So I thought, you know, whereas I was interested in becoming a pilot and I was interested in um, doing engineering and stuff like that, um, I thought about video games and I realized there's probably more of what I like to do that I could actually apply if I worked in video games than if I was to do something else. And so I actually started at BioWare as a 3D artist and I did uh, models for Neverwinter Nights and stuff like that. But I, I started doing a lot of technical art. So, you know, it's things like... Um, anything from programming to figuring out how to make better art tools and stuff like that. And that really gave me a lot of access to the different parts of a project. So I was able to learn what everyone's job is and how everything comes together. You know, within a couple of years really taught me a lot about how games are made. And uh, when we got the opportunity to do the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic project, um, I was fortunate to become the project director for that. And so I did uh, Knights of the Old Republic and then the Mass Effect series. I think when we finished Knights of the Old Republic, we uh, we had a lot of fun making that game. We we loved Star Wars and uh, we were really happy with what we had made. But I think there was another challenge out there for us. We basically wanted to do something very similar, make a, a console RPG, you know, on the PC, on the console. Um, we wanted it to be a little bit more accessible in terms of action that people understand versus kind of a d20 turn-based thing. We wanted to do something similar but better in a few ways. And we knew there was another challenge out there, which is what if we could create our own universe for this and, and not play in someone else's as, as much as we love Star Wars. So that, that was really was the genesis, is you take the Knights of the Old Republic team and think about a new IP with a little bit more accessible kind of shooter-based gameplay. And from that, we started working on what became Mass Effect 1. I put a few notes on paper, and Greg and Ray and I uh, had a meeting over lunch at a Greek restaurant uh, near here. And we just talked about the high-level ideas of what this kind of game should be. And, and, you know, some of the fantasy of the games that we loved that we wanted to try and recapture um, you know, for me, it's games like Starflight going back to 1986, games like Deus Ex with, you know, there's, there's shooter stuff, but there's skills to it. And, you know, so we talked about these kinds of things. And um, ultimately, we gave ourselves a, a, a rough framework, but it, it, it really took probably a year or more before we really had a handle on what it was. I mean, it starts with basic questions like, um, should there be should there be aliens? You can have a great science fiction property with no aliens. It's just humans and planets and exploration and stuff like that, but no aliens. Um, and, and should we have other planets or should we make it like a pitch black kind of thing where you're on a planet and it's, and it's a story that's limited to that location, which you can do a great job of, but it's a, it's a choice, right? So we had to think about all these, these choices that were to be made. Is there time travel? Is there teleportation? And then, uh, you know, only once we kind of had those things locked down, did we start moving forward with what's the best story to tell in that kind of a world? And, you know, what, what other fantasy fulfillment things do we have for players? Wanting to have your own ship, um, you know, having a reason to be able to make decisions in deep space with impunity, you know, like a, a James Bond or a Jedi or Jack Bauer, you know, it's like, what's, what's that reason for why you get to make decisions that are important, you know, and that became the idea behind the Spectres. I'm a big fan of uh, sci-fi. I've got an extensive collection, and I, I like to buy the, uh, you know, the, the bins in the grocery store for, you know, DVDs for $3 and stuff like that. So um, I, think it's, I think it's fun to get movies and even movies that are examples of things not to do, you know. Um, but there's, to me, there's something to the magic of science fiction and the fantasy of being able to do things that you can't otherwise do. Um, it's one of the benefits actually that we have of uh, being a studio that makes games in different genres is there are people who 
love fantasy and really understand fantasy. And so we've got Dragon Age and we've got uh, people who feel that way about science fiction and really know about science fiction and how to capture that fantasy. And then we also have a lot of people who like both of them and end up working on both games and, and uh, we bring the sensibilities across from one to the other. Anytime you create something new, um, and, and, and we've seen this many times before, and, and you can see it when, when there's a new movie out or you know, a new book or whatever, anytime there's something new, uh, obviously the less you know about it, the easier it is to say that it's exactly like this or it's exactly like that. Um, and ultimately though, I think the people who, who, who really understand what Mass Effect is, um, they can see that there's originality in there and it's, it's got an integrity to itself. It's not based on, it's not based on or meant to try and recapture something else. However, I think what, what you can and should do is understand and it's not just within science fiction, it's, it's just entertainment. When, when you look at, um, for example, one of my favorite movies is Gladiator. And there, there's a, an amazing structural thing that happens in Gladiator around the value system they set up and what victory means for the hero in that movie, which is ultimately for him and, and the values they, they set up for him and understanding the afterlife and wanting to get there. For him, victory is being able to die. And be with his family and understanding these kinds of things from all through entertainment and being, being able to break them down into their principles and then build those principles back up into something fresh that's what we try to do i think one thing that is interesting about what we're doing with mass effect you know it's it's a popular story to run is like do games do you know sex well enough do they do romance well enough but the reason that we have romance in our games i think it's it's twofold first you know, people react very well to it. Um, if you dabble in it to kind of play with it and then criticize it, um, yeah, if, if you're not emotionally invested in it, then when you see or do certain things, then you, you'll be critical. But for people who pursue these things, and they, and they are relationships that you, pr you pursue, you have to pursue them to get them to happen. Um, it's not um, pressing A and then you get a scene. For the people who are, who are actually you know, thinking about the, the relationships and thinking about which characters they like and, and progressing these relationship, relationships in the game. Um, I think, you know, we've had tremendous feedback from it. Um, it's one of the favorite parts of our games, you know, according to our fans and the feedback that we cool. get. Um, but the other thing is, I think, especially over the course of a trilogy, we're doing some pretty interesting things with the way you uh, have a relationship with a character in the first game and then they're really not there for you in the second game, but other people are. And then, you know, when, when you come back to the third game, they're there again. And have you had a different relationship with other characters? Um, you know, how do these things affect, you know, a, much, uh, a relationship on a much larger scale than even just one game? So I think there's, there's fun things that we're doing with that, with relationships across a series that have never really been done before. Well, the idea of creating a trilogy that preserved your choices, not just throughout one game, but across the entire trilogy, was actually in the, in the very original concept for Mass Effect and what the trilogy was about. And that's one of the things that I'm most proud of, actually, is that back in uh, 2005, we announced Mass Effect. And we talked about what it was, and we talked about that it was a trilogy, um, and that there would be this concept of being able to move your save game across. Um, now it's it's very important to also mention that we, we build these games so that people can enter them at any point um, and that it's a great starting experience and that's how Mass Effect 3 is designed. In fact, better than ever, it's a, it's a great place to start in the Mass Effect universe. But for people who have played with us all along, um, the idea that you create a character and then these choices and these relationships actually span huge game titles. That's something that's never been done before and I would argue might never be done again. It's very hard, very expensive, very complicated. And even the idea of saying that you're going to do a trilogy, you have to, you have to plan that you're going to do that. But to be able to, to do that and know that it's going to have to span 
recessions. It's going to have to span changes in the industry and the way people consume games, the way people play them. Um, it's, it's been a huge victory for us just to do three games, let alone being able to also do this, this save game feature that we do. We find comfort in doing something that's ambitious. I think, I think where we would be nervous is if we were doing something where we weren't sure what was going to be great about it. But by calling out things that are going to be amazing, um, we know that if we achieve those things, then we'll do well. And, and so that's, that was part of the, the uh, fun of developing Mass Effect is, you know, we created these, these huge goals for ourselves, knowing that if, if we could ever achieve these things, create an IP that millions of people could identify with and enjoy being in, um, and, and do all three games and, and complete that as a package. If we could do these things, then, then we felt we would be successful. And I think we've been able to do that.